Hello, this is episode two of my automated ping pong serving machine. Episode one was sorting out the mechanics, which is the ball hopper, ball feed, and ball launcher. This episode is the electronics and the discovery path between the proof of concept to revision two of the printed circuit board and its features. The proof of concept build is mainly a la carte electronic modules with an Arduino Nano. There's nothing wrong with this prototype platform when working out features and benchmarking some electrical goals or functions. This is a portable launcher, so it should be battery powered. You don't want cords running across the room when you're working with a ping pong table. A cordless power tool battery works great, so I designed some simple battery terminal taps to feed power. To step down the battery's 20 volts to a mix of 9 volts for the motors and 5 volts for the logic, I went with the TI LMR33630 buck converter. To be honest, TI's data sheets are amazing. It's like copying someone's homework, so I learned nothing. I usually lean to TI stuff because their data sheets always include a typical circuit application. This project is still in development phase, so the buck design, which I know I'm gonna reuse from PCB revision to revision, are made as removable modules by using standoffs that have plated footprints tied to the VN and V out nets. To drive motors, I'm using the DRV8871, which is a pretty common DC motor driver. And in this application, flyback diodes are a must because these toy grade brush motors create large voltage spikes. And again, in the theme of keeping things modular, all the motor drivers are swappable and all the outputs are landed to an RJ45 jack which is for fast setup and tear down of the machine because I'm still working things out. The PCB is still in development of hardware and software, which means I'm uploading new code at the same time I'm powering all the driver bucks and the motor controllers through the battery. The ideal diode isolates my PC's USB 5 volt rail from the 5 volt rail supplied by the bucks and battery and prevents either one from backfeeding into another. So it's a must in something like this. Unfortunately, I did get the reverse polarity footprint wrong of this P-channel MOSFET since I trusted a random KiCad footprint without checking. I'll fix this in revision three. Another to-do item is removing the Arduino Nano footprint and I'll explain why. The Arduino Nano only has two kilobytes of RAM to run your program. So if you want to use an OLED screen, you have to dedicate one kilobyte of dynamic RAM to hold the screen buffer, which is half of all the dynamic memory on the Arduino Nano. So with already 50% of the RAM used, I had some future scope creep ideas like status LEDs, a wireless scoreboard, because why not? And after that, I'm out of RAM. Using basically all the dynamic memory will cause erratic and unstable behavior. So at the base, the AT Mega 328 microcontroller is not gonna work. So I'm using the ESP8266 because it's the next step up of microcontrollers that I have in my parts bin. Yeah, anything else would work. You could of course remove the last couple features and make it work on the Nano, but there's still another problem that faces both microcontrollers, which is not enough dedicated hardware timers to handle different critical timing routines. We need one hardware timer for the IR remote library and another hardware timer to generate PWM signals. The ESP is really poor at being compatible out of the box with driving motors and having dedicated PWM hardware. So in comes a supporting hardware role, which is the PCA9685 IC. This is a 16 channel I squared C PWM driver. I tried its simpler, less feature filled cousin, but I had problems getting different duty cycles to write to more than one pin at the same time. So the PCA9685 gives me plenty of overhead, some of which I'll put to use to drive three brush motors. The first being the feed motor, which I can vary the speed through software, so the ball output rate can be adjusted on the fly. More important is independent control of the launch motors. Here I can pick top spin, back spin, or whatever combination, including no spin. This lets you vary types of serves for practicing returns.
All interfacing, including motor controls, are done via an infrared remote. Some user feedback values are written to the OLED. The OLED is really only used for debugging, since you'll be at least nine feet away from this device when any useful data is being shown. So I added these RGB status LEDs to give you a visual indication for what motors are active and their output speed based on LED intensity. I do want to go back to the remote choice because it was a big deal for me. There's just too many buttons on universal remotes, so something based in the more general prototype realm makes more sense, but these remotes feel pretty terrible. The button presses are mushy, or they just lack any tactile click feedback. But lo and behold, this decade-old Roku remote feels pretty good and works on really basic NEC protocols. What's even better is you can buy replacement remotes for newer Roku TVs on AliExpress. You'll get eight more buttons to expand some features like the scoreboard and the future stuff that I'll mention later. But whatever remote you pick, you do have to decode all the commands and document each one and then figure out some logical UI feature assignment. I went with this layout and I recommend making a graphic for the remote you use. It just helps in the planning process. Okay, now to the future to-do list of changes and fixes. I'd like to secure the OLED to the main board as whatever this is, it's not gonna last forever. Going forward, the Arduino Nano is not suited for this project, so I'm gonna remove the footprint in the future. And since the PCA9685 has so many extra IO pins, I'm gonna add bi-directional support to all the motor drivers because I'm no longer limited by just using the microcontroller's IO pins. I don't think you'll ever need backwards drive for a ping pong launcher, but it could work for jams in the ball feed and you know, you could use this board for other weird projects. I would like to add some more screw terminals for IO features. I wanna add the ability to detect when a ball is launched or at least enters the launch chamber. So some kind of optical detection would work and this is to count the number of balls that have been launched. And I wanna to add to that a big LED display to track balls for running and counting drills. Speaking of drills, the more field testing I do, the stronger the case is made for making small adjustments in ball placement. I did add some servo connections here because I want to add the ability to direct shots on the table by a few degrees, and I'll figure that out how to do all that since that's going to be another pass at looking at mechanics, not just software stuff. I did have this second RJ45 jack for the optional scoreboard that I'll figure out. But the more I read the sometimes peculiar specs of the ESP8266 dev boards, I, I realize I'm wrong whenever I try and hope and make an assumption. These SPI connections, which I thought would be a great drive for SPI stuff, are actually connected directly to flash memory. So this doesn't work at all. The, it just bricks the SP when you have any of these pins terminated. So the scoreboard feature might have to be offloaded to a second dedicated microcontroller or maybe just piggyback more on the NeoPixel library. I don't know at this point. I'm just more upset about the $1.50 connector I soldered on here and it has no purpose at all. Lastly, there's more compact and more power capable all-in-one buck modules that I could use. I think it's possible to keep them in this footprint size, but if not, I've added this smaller footprint for the commonly available MP1584 module. That's an adjustable module set by this little screw. So really, if you're building this board, the goal is the only components you need are or maybe a dozen SMD parts. So that's about everything. Stay tuned for episode three, which I think is when I'll say everything's finished. I don't have a lead time for that, but this is an active project and things are still progressing pretty smoothly. So thanks for watching.